it was uh, February 8th, 2021, and um, something didn't feel right. So I go in the house and everything's normal until I got to my phone and I had missed seven phone calls that uh, there had been a bad accident. And that's when your world kind of takes a turn. It was about 20 below zero. You know, the roads were challenging that day. They were icy, uh, snow packed in places. Um, you know, I, when I left the driveway, I just kind of looked up and said, Lord, you gotta get me there. You know, in 20 years, this was the most horrific accident scene I've ever seen. There's no way to get through the road. One vehicle's sideways in the middle of the road, the other vehicle's facing towards us. There's another truck on the other side. There's other vehicles over here. There's debris all over. We were worried about exposure to the cold and, you know, hypothermia taking effect. So uh, one of the first questions I asked him was, Willie, you could have a C-spine injury. You could have a neck injury. If we move you and get you out of here, it could cause further injury. But if not, you could expire right here in the vehicle. Are you OK with me doing what I have to do to get you out of here? And he said, you just get me out of here. You do whatever you gotta do to get me out of here. The dash and everything had come down on his lower extremities. Uh, we had to cut the door pillars out, um, kind of push the dash up off of his legs. You know, it was kind of a prolonged extrication. I knew right away that Willie's injuries required uh, more than what we could do for him. So I got a hold of Hastings Fire and said, you guys need to roll this way. We'll meet you in route. Right when I got in, I seen Willie had some uh, blood on his face. It looked like he was struggling to breathe. Uh, first responders were uh, trying to stabilize his uh, lower extremities. The left side of his left lung was a little diminished. The right side was clear. That was a pretty good indication that he probably had a flail chest of some kind. We were able to get back to, get from uh, our meeting point with Red Cloud to Mary Lanning very fast. We had the entire trauma team here before he had even gotten here. The anesthesia department was here, surgeon was here. One thing that caught everybody's attention is that he seemed to have asymmetry to his um, chest when he was breathing. And so we had suspicions initially of maybe he had a pneumo. And so we initially started getting set up for a chest tube just in case we had x-ray at bedside, um, wanted to get that uh, portable chest x-ray done so we could either confirm that it was a pneumo or something else was going on. Uh, the first thing he complained about was his chest hurting. And with someone that has an obvious open, broken leg and an obvious dislocation of their left ankle, I found it alarming that his chest would be hurting. So once we got the x-ray, we actually discovered that there was no pneumo um, and he was actually a rupture of the diaphragm. Um, I knew that we were going to have to transfer him. And so I started making phone calls to a helicopter service um, to get them on standby, get them en route he was not going to be able to sustain his current state. You know, once we knew that this wasn't a quick fix, that he needed a chest tube and that would open up everything, it became fairly abundantly clear that we needed to intubate him, which meant, meant put, him, put a breathing tube in place and put him on a ventilator. Me being the primary nurse taking care of him, I remember the last thing I told him, I said, we're going to help you breathe, we're going to put a tube in your lungs, and you're going to be okay. Once a trauma patient in our facility needs to be on a ventilator, we, they need critical staff, which is beyond the capabilities we have in our, or in, in our hospital. I had actually already called the number, which is a direct line to the Bryan uh, trauma team, uh, and spoke with them directly in, in, about what I had, and they, they had accepted right away. On him coming in, we knew that he would be pretty severely injured, and with the diaphragm injury, we worry about other injuries such as uh, splenic rupture, intra-abdominal uh, organ injuries. Um, so we were prepared for him to be fairly sick. 
he had very thready pulses, uh, which to me means that he's he's probably um, starting to spiral a little bit down the the trauma cascade of of hypotension and coagulopathy and acidosis uh, and needing to be snatched out of that. I called both my partners in um, and we, all three of us were working on him at the same time. Uh, we used the thoracotomy incision that was, that was made in the trauma bay in order to work both from the inside uh, of his abdomen and then uh, be able to utilize the thoracotomy incision to fix his diaphragm eventually from, from the chest side as well. And you watch for weeks, the trauma, the heart rate, the heart rate was just 160 and 180 all day long, just trying to fix itself. It was trauma. Week three, they put him in coma, uh, paralyzed to fix the lung because the lung had been shoved through the diaphragm into the other lung. So it was four weeks of, you don't know what you were headed for day by day. After Willie's major injuries were addressed and he was stable, then I was brought in to help him with his orthopedic problems, which were a right open tibial shaft fracture, meaning the bone had come through the wound, uh, and he had bilateral ankle fractures and also a toe dislocation. So Willie's open right tibia fracture was definitely the most complicated of his orthopedic injuries. When the bone comes through the skin, it can cause infection and put him at risk of losing his leg. So addressing that and making sure the wound is clean and that we fix it properly really ensured that he got to keep his leg. On the left side, Willie had a trimalleolar ankle fracture, which means that he's broken the three major bony supports around the ankle and it was partially dislocated. So because Willie had so many injuries orthopedically, his surgeries had to be spaced out on several days to make sure he was safe. Uh, so he responded really well. The first day I took him to surgery, I cleaned out his open tibia wound and put a nail inside his tibia bone and fixed that ankle and then took him back a few days later and fixed a complex ankle injury on the other side. Uh, so he did really well throughout the surgeries and was stable. My mom was just kind of there to keep me updated on everything, make sure that was all right. My mom would tell me that they would try to bring me out of the coma and I would just want to fight because I had no idea what was going on. Um, I'd want to pull stuff, pull my trach out and they they had my arms tied down. So that's what I was trying to reach for. So they would have to put me back under. Willie actually recovered faster than I would expect for a patient who had the severity of injuries that he had. So it's like a really, complicated story that he lost his wife and it's just devastating to lose the partner that you have um, and to have these little kids at home and to be worrying about them. So the fact that Willie has kept his uh, positive outlook and has always looked forward and looked to move ahead has just been really impactful. Um, and he leaves an impression on all of us every time he visits us in the clinic. I'm five months after my surgery and I'm able to walk, I mean, Yes, I've got pain, but it's not anything that I knew was going to be there. I mean, the fact I'm able to crawl in and out of a tractor, the fact I can carry my, my daughters around. I'm not back to normal, but I'm, I'm pretty close. I mean, one thing that struck me about Willie was the last time that I saw him in clinic was our final visit. And he mentioned to me that the day before his visit, he was jumping on a trampoline with his kids. In Willie's case, the, the team needed to be uh, ready to go and everyone was a part of his recovery um, and, and played an important role in him getting to the level he's been, that he's at today. It's very rewarding to be able to work in a team environment like this and be one part of a system that contributes to helping a patient get back on their feet, literally, and get back to a life that they can live and enjoy with their family. You can't thank him enough. I mean, I. The visits I've had in Lincoln, I've, I've thanked Dr. Scott numerous times. And you just, you're always in, I don't wanna say you're always in debt to him, but you feel like you are. They saved your life, you know, they brought you back. They could have easily just amputated my one leg and said to hell with it, but they didn't. Everything can change just like that. Always hug your loved ones, because you never know. It's tragic but if my story can maybe change somebody's perspective on stuff, you know, so be it.